Does the Sony a7 IV have dual native ISOs? Well, you're about to find out. What's up everybody? The a7 IV makes use of dual native ISOs to get better noise and dynamic range performance at higher ISOs. Dual native ISO is not a new concept, but different models of cameras will have different settings for the first and second native ISOs in different gammas. Let's just jump right into it with the test that I ran. I ran all of these tests in a virtually pitch black environment for all the different gammas and started at the base ISO for the respective gamma. I then increased the ISO until I saw the noise pattern improve, which meant that I had hit the second native ISO. I use a Luma waveform to assess the results as the noise improvements are not so easy to see just by looking at a source video. In fact, once I encode this video and then upload it to YouTube so it can re-encode it, and with many of us still using LCD monitors that don't display the blacks well, I doubt that many of you will be able to see the difference in the source video on the right half of the screen. As I'm reviewing the video, I'm able to see the noise pattern clearly in the S-Log examples, but that's probably just because of the higher ISOs and the higher black level that S-Log uses. Some of you might begin to notice that the second native ISO is two stops above the base ISO. You'd be correct, and that's actually the case with any gamma or picture profile that you choose to shoot in on the a7 IV. Now I could have just stated that from the start and then this video would have been less than a minute, but I thought that some people might want to see the actual results of the test rather than just take my word for it. Not taking dynamic range into consideration, you can look at the noise performance in each of the respective gammas and then use that to decide what ISOs you want to stay away from. For example, if you're using S-Log3, you may choose to shoot at ISO 3200 and just close your aperture slightly to obtain the correct exposure instead of using ISO 2500 because here ISO 3200 has less noise than ISO 2500. Comparing the a7 IV to the a7S 3 I believe that the a7S 3s second native ISO is always four and a third stops above the base ISO instead of two stops. Still comparing against the a7S 3 say we use a gamma on our a7 IV with a base ISO of 100. It seems that the a7 IV actually has better noise performance from ISO 400 to 1250 because its second native ISO is only two stops above its base ISO and the a7 III doesn't hit its second native ISO until 1600 when starting from a base ISO of 80. This means that while the a7 S3 is increasing the noise in a linear fashion from ISO 400 to 1250, the a7 IV gets a boost in noise performance at ISO 400 which almost puts its noise performance back to where it was at ISO 100 and then it starts to increase in a linear fashion from there. So when the a7 S3 is at ISO 1250, although the a7 IV is also at ISO 1250, it has noise performance closer to that of ISO 320. So the a7 IV wins at noise performance at the lower ISOs, but the a7S III runs away with the show at ISOs from 1600 and up. If you enjoy nerding out on this stuff like I do, there are also other takeaways from these tests like seeing how the black level is set differently with the different gammas. In case you're out looking for official documentation from Sony regarding dual native ISOs, apparently for some odd reason, Sony doesn't advertise their cameras as having dual native ISOs. However, it's a feature that many people have already confirmed in a number of Sony's other cameras and, as you just saw, the a7 IV has it too. In case any of you are wondering what gamma is used when the picture profile is set to off, the movie gamma is the one that's in use when shooting video and the still gamma is in use when shooting stills. Well, I guess that's all for the test. This probably wasn't the most entertaining video, but I do hope that this video was helpful to some of you out there. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.